Day one of the 2022 FIM International Six Days of Enduro from the Auvergne Run Out region in the southeast of France. 541 riders head for the start just outside the host city of Le Puy en Velay for the first of five full days and three different routes, all over 200 kilometres long. Monday and Tuesday's course sees competitors complete a loop around the west of the département of Haute-Loire before facing the mythical beast of Gévaudan in Sorg and returning to the paddock to camp their times over the five special tests. A close fought start to the week in the World Trophy, with the top five nations separated by less than a minute. France ran down in fifth last year before two retirements on the penultimate day ruled them out of contention. They're back in the same position on their first day back as hosts. Hugo Blanjou giving them something to cheer as the third fastest through the fifth test after a tough start to the morning. Sitting fourth, but just 26 seconds from the leaders are the USA. Much of the talk ahead of this week has been of the return of Caleb Russell, but it was Dante Oliveira stepping up to the senior team after riding at junior level last year, who was the fastest American by just a tenth of a second. Great Britain boasts two of the top six in the current World Championship standings in Nathan Watson and Steve Holcomb, and it was no great surprise to see the two of them among the lead quintet in the scratch times to put their team into a provisional medal position. Great Britain haven't won in any of the three classes since 1953, but this looks like their best chance to do so for some years. Only three hundredths of a second clear of the UK team in second are Italy, for whom Alex Salvini had a tough day. The veteran, who turns 37 just after this event, missed last year's trophy success, but was a part of Italy's 2007 title-winning side, went on to claim the E2 World Championship in 2013. But on this occasion, he was slower even the debutant Samuele Bernardini, and Salvini is sure to make more of an impression in the coming days. In a quite incredible individual performance, Josep Garcia was fastest in all five special tests on day one in France and finished 24 seconds clear of his nearest rival in scratch, Enduro 1 world champion Andrea Verona. That gap represents the bulk of Spain's early advantage that stands at just over 22 seconds. It's been a great day for all of us because we've all found a good rhythm. For me personally, everything has been great. No falls, good times and leading the scratch. So I'm very happy. But there's still a long way to go, so we have to focus to the finish. That's all. Day two tomorrow. The return of all to count regulations for the World Trophy means each of the four riders' times are now included in the calculations, so one weak link can be crucial, even more so with less than half a minute currently between the top four teams. A dramatic start to the week in the Junior Trophy. Traumatic if you're following any of the USA, Sweden or France, all out of the running with a retirement apiece. Neither Albin Norbin nor Antoine Alex even made it out of the first test, both ironically retiring in the same place with mechanical difficulties, galling for both nations whose remaining two riders were each in the top four in scratch. The USA's Cody Barnes made it only slightly further before his retirement that ends the USA's hopes. After cross test one, um, the, my bike had an electronic issue and I was unable to resolve it in the time needed to get to time check uh, number one. So uh, I houred out today and yeah, that's a wrap on my, uh, my 2022 ISD. So very big bummer, but nonetheless, I'm very honored um, to just be one of the riders selected to come here. Great Britain start the week in third in both men's classes with their junior trio evenly matched and consistent on day one. They line up with the current leader of the Youth World Championship, Harry Edmondson. Ronnie Kaitanen made the difference for Finland over a minute faster than the best ranked UK junior, yet the Finns only 32 seconds ahead. The team has a history with this competition, dominating it in the late 1990s, but they haven't won a junior trophy since 2004. The bulk of that team then claimed the World Trophy in 2011, Finland's last top flight success. One and a half minutes clear of their nearest rival at the end of day one, the retirement of three major favourites has put Italy into the driving seat to defend their junior trophy title. A promising start for Morgan Lesiado, who only made the switch to enduro this season, the former European 250 motocross champion making his debut at the six days.
behind that current lead trio hoping to pick up the pieces. The likes of Chile, the Czech Republic, Spain and Australia all within one minute of one another in the battle for fourth. With Gemma Wilson stepping down after the last visit to France, then Tyler Jones missing out due to visa issues, Jessica Gardner is the only remaining member of the Australian team that won the Women's World Trophy consecutively between 2013 and 2018. Late call-up Ebony Nielsen found the going tough on her six days debut. The women from down under are currently outside of the podium places. Great Britain's women sit second with Jane Daniels, 2019 and 2020 world champion, also the series leader in 22, leading their timesheets. But even so, she was no match for Brandy Richards, untouchable in 2021 on her way to the women's scratch win, and over a minute faster than anyone else on day one in 2022. Corey Steed also impressed on her debut in second as the USA amassed an unprecedented near four-minute lead in just five tests. The duel between France and Australia is the only real battle in the women's trophy on day one, but we're only five tests down out of 26. Tomorrow we head back around the same route for day two of the 2022 FIM International Six Days of Enduro.